begin with our final topic of 1450 to 1750, which is just kind of a overall look at the major changes um, going on in the era of 1450 to 1750. It says continuity and change. It's, it's mostly change. This is a very rapidly changing uh, society here. Uh, mo- rapidly changing uh, economy as well. And so the most significant change is the um, integration of the Western Hemisphere into the larger global network, right? Undoubtedly, right? Putting Bringing the Americas into this is a big, big deal. Right. Um, and of course, change from Western. This resulted from Western Europe exploring it, colonizing it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, about all the technologies, I've been through those a bunch: the astronomical charts, the astrolabe, the compass, the magnetic compass, Latin sails, Carrick, Caravel, and the flute. Um, and then the result of this is the Columbian Exchange. Again, probably the most important thing of this era, right? The exchange of goods between um, uh, the biological exchange of crops, animals, people and diseases uh, between the West and the East that drastically changes both of the hemispheres. Uh, f- mostly for the good, but some for the bad. Um, we have the development of the Atlantic Trade Network, right, which mostly focuses on three regions, which is the Americas, uh, if you really wanted to break that into the North and South America and Caribbean, uh, the Americas, uh, Western Europe, and Western Africa. Um, it's also kind of known as the triangular trade, right? Um, we talked about the deadly diseases that came in, right? The migration of slaves from Africa, uh, the migration of European colonists, right? Um, and then the spread of religion and the, the syncretic religions that came from that, right? Um, so we see, um, on top of all this, right, economically speaking, uh, we see, um, the uh, emergence of maritime trade empires, uh, especially the Portuguese, followed by the British, the French, and the Dutch. Um, and so we see uh, Europeans really become, to, the Europeans come to dominate global trade um, at the expense of the Chinese merchants and the Indian merchants and the Muslim merchants, uh, the Arab Muslim merchants, right, that previously had been in a lot of control of of international trade, right? Um, we also have the colony, the colonial system in the Americas, right? The colonies in the Americas are a new thing that uh, really shapes those those strong empires as well, right? Um, and one big thing that comes out of this, right, um, is the uh, silver that goes to Spain and China. And that silver uh, is very important. Uh, it's good, but it's also bad, and that's going to cause severe inflation in both of those economies and actually help lead to the end of both of them as major powers, right? Um, we've talked about mercantilism, uh, the rise of mercantilism as a major economic system, which is all about the accumulation of, of metals uh, and things like that. Um, but mercantilism will eventually give way to capitalism as joint stock companies become very profitable um, and start to see uh, a lot of demand for joint stock companies, right? Uh, again, mercantilism is gold and silver accumulation and export more than you import, right? Um, all right. Um, give me one second. I have to go chase my cat down. Okay, the cat has been retrie- retrieved. The cat is quite all right. Um, So let's go ahead and continue on here with more effects of the new global economy, right? So this this flow of wealth into Europe uh, is going to lead to some major changes going forward uh, within Europe that's going to lead to, of course, international consequences, right? Um, One example is the uh, expanding middle class, which is going to massively change European politics, uh, especially starting in France. Uh, but then also kind of lay the growth of the Industrial Revolution, which is probably the major uh, change economically in the 19th century, right? Um, And we talked about that inflation that came into uh, China uh, and Spain as well, okay? Um, And then uh, we see regional markets continue to grow here. Um, That's probably one of our few continuities uh, that we've talked about. 
uh, continued growth in regional markets internationally, right in Africa, Asia, and uh, Europe. Okay. Um, we also see a massive change in how labor is conducted, right? Um, we got new forms of labor, especially due to the rise, of course, of the colonies in the Americas, um, right? We have, um, right, we have the African slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade, the Middle Passage. Okay. Um, we also see, um, you know, we see indigenous people, but again, they're mostly killed by disease. Um, we see the continuation of serfdom, especially in Russia, uh, but in other areas as well, but we mostly focus on Russia. Um, we see uh, indentured servitude uh, really come to the forefront during colonization as Europeans look to make their way to the New World. Um, and then we see the, in, the three major systems of the Spanish Empire, the encomienda system, uh, which is for... Um, early colonizers uh, in order to get them labor, right? It's basically slavery for the indigenous people. Uh, the hacienda system, which is very cheap labor, it's not slaves per se, uh, and then the mita system, which helps uh, with mining, right? That is also a co coerced labor system, right? Um, and then lastly, in social structure, right, we see a racial social structure created in uh, the Spanish, uh, really in all the, in all the colonies, uh, but especially in the Spanish colonies. Uh, we talked about that last section, right? Um, and then we also see um, a lot of societal conflicts in this era are going to lead to revolutions in the next. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Continuity and change, 1450s, 1750. We are moving on 1750 to 1900, and I will see you.